Well, it's a joy to have you in a room that was very important to me in 2004, late 2005, early. One of my first board meetings with LMM was held here, and there were two major items on the agenda. One was the request of the City of Cleveland and Cuyahoga County Commissioners that LMM take over the homeless shelter at 2100, and we were in the process of seeking and finding a new executive director, Carol Frederick, who was at a meeting in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Lutheran Services of America today. So as chairman of the board, I get to say welcome, and especially to say thank you to the Community West Foundation for grants that have come to this place. When we took on the shelter, there was one significant, two significant pieces that were critical to us. One is that it had to be funded. The city and the county had to do their share of funding this thing because this is the county building and this is their program and the city program. It's been a struggle, especially as economy has changed in the last couple of years. And so the grant from Community West Foundation has been just a way to move forward. But the second thing that was important to us was we didn't want to just provide a bed for somebody for the night. We wanted to get at the issues of homelessness and find some of the solutions. As you listen and see and hear today, I hope you will join me in being proud that this is a place that has accomplished some of that. Uh, we, uh, so last year we had um, 3,400 people, um, 3,400 different people came to the shelter for services. Of those, 1,900 uh, were first time homeless, people that never thought they would be hom homeless before. Uh, that number is up um, more than double since 2007. So as you can imagine with the economy, there's more and more new, home, new people who are homeless. Um, fortunately, with our partnerships and services, we're able to get people out quicker. We talk about length of stay, how long are people here? We've been able to cut that down by a third in the last um, couple years. So the average length of stay went from 60 days to 40 days. Um, I will say that that statistic is a little bit, I won't say misleading, but it's kind of hard to grasp. Um, people are here one day, two days. People are here one year, two years. So when you average all that together, but overall the trend line is going down for how long people need to be here before we can connect them to housing. So that's, um, that's good news. Uh, we can, um, uh, the, the basic services here, um, people come in, everyone uh, is here um, for dinner and overnight they have breakfast. And then about two thirds of our guys um, stay during the day because they're involved in programming, uh, they're volunteering, they're being active in things. About a third of the guys um, have not yet engaged in that or they're here such a short time, they're sporadic, they don't really wanna get all connected to everything we're doing, which is okay too. They still have a safe place to go um, overnight and then they're out during the day and then they come back again uh, in, in the evening. So um, related to the meals, we serve um, about close to a thousand meals a day and have lots of volunteers Volunteers um, help help do that. So that's one of our um, one of our basic services. Thank you so much for coming, and um, thank you so much for your support over the years. Uh, Community West has just been a, a, a beacon for us, and uh, we've just been so blessed to have this uh, partnership. So uh, we're just so happy that you're here and an interest and in continuing to um, you know find out about what we do and and help us serve those that we serve. Uh, this is our women's and children's shelter uh, and what we have here are 32 beds uh, hoping to expand to 34 beds uh, in the next month or so and uh, we serve women and children and the average we have about uh, 20 women and about 20 children and the population just changes daily, weekly, monthly. A lot of the people that we serve have had domestic violence in their past. Um, and a lot of the people that we're serving, and, and really one of the, the biggest growing populations is the veteran, women's veteran population. Um, the women's of the homeless veterans, the women's piece of that is the fastest growing. So we now have, uh, we have a, a per diem agreement with the Veterans uh, Administration 
and we have six beds that are assigned to um, our women veterans and that could be with their children or without so that's uh, and if the the situation for the women's veterans has really been tough a lot of uh, sexual assaults a lot of PTSD um, and so it's it's a lot of barriers and, and issues and, and traumas that they come into our shelter with. Um, and in this shelter we do have, what you're sitting in, in now is our dining room obviously. Um, outside we have a, a playground for the children to play and we also have like a little resting area for the, to the moms to, for, for, re, for relaxation. And then downstairs we have a room for the teens, uh, we have a room for, uh, we have an art room because what we do here is if we do any therapy, most of it is art therapy, uh, where we give the, the, the kids and the moms an opportunity to talk about their trauma, but do it in pictures and really not words, because words are sometimes hard to come up with. Um, and then um, upstairs, we have the, most of the rooms, and most of the rooms consist of a bed uh, and a chest of drawers, and everything else is kind of community. Um, Involvement. Uh, this is where uh, we start the process of uh, serving over 60,000 meals a year out of this out of this room, and we serve a cold breakfast every morning, Monday through Friday, and a hot lunch on uh, and a hot lunch Monday through Friday. And um, Rosie here has <laughs> been volunteering for how long? 18 years. 26 years. 26 years. <laughs> And she and her high school, old. her high school buddies, come here every Wednesday. Here's one of her buddies. She's hiding. And um, this crew is one of about 450 volunteers a year that come to the West Side Catholic Center, either helping with the kitchen, or we'll, we're going to show you the clothing distribution, or outside where we um, we have mailboxes for our folks for over 300 people who use our address to get their mail. So there's a lot of services and programs that we do um, besides just eating, because we want our, our, the people that we serve to get to have some hope so they can move on to whatever they want uh, next in their, in their lives. And what we do is really provide the tools. Uh, and then it's really up to them and our staff to kind of advocate for them to get to the next spot in their journey. Um, all of these lovely folks are um, taking the, 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 the contributions, the donations that come, and they sort it out and they get everything prepared in here by size and gender and, and children. And um, we, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we open up, we're, we're going to take you in because that's, we can go in there, right? Uh, is like a clothing store. Uh, and folks come in and can pick out four bags of either clothing or toiletries or household items and they're allowed to participate in that twice a month. And we give away about 57,000 bags of, to the folks that we serve. So it's about nine or 10,000 folks that are able to take advantage of that during the year. Welcome to Providence House. I'm Natalie Leek Nelson. I'm the CEO and President of Providence House. I've been here 10 years um, and we are Ohio's first crisis nursery. As you know, we provide at the front door emergency shelter to children newborn to six years old who are at risk of abuse or neglect. And what we do is take the children into safe haven here while we work to keep those families and get them safe and stable through linking them to services at among 30 different partners in the greater Cleveland area, pretty much on the west side um, for the most part. So our children are here due to homelessness, domestic violence, substance abuse by their caregiver, medical and mental health issues are a growing population for us. Um, for those of you that were unable to join us for our luncheon, one of our featured families in the video is a mom who is terminally ill with cancer and has two small children. So as she's hospitalized through that process, we've become a primary caregiver for her young daughters while she deals with her cancer treatments and hospitalizations. And so chronic, chronic illness among single parents is frequently 
For a lot of our families, the reason they lose their kids to the foster care system, sadly enough. And many of our families know they need the help to become safe, stable caregivers. But the first thing that happens when you go to our child welfare system, the only offering that it has is foster care. So if you say I'm drug and alcohol addicted and I need a 90 day inpatient program, the first thing that happens is your children are taken away. And so for a lot of our families, that's not a choice they want to make and they'll continue to try to struggle through these issues. Providence House is the only free, voluntary, residential program for families to voluntarily leave their children in someone's care and go seek those treatments and support that they need. So while the children are here, we do medical care, school readiness. We drive them to and from school. If they're enrolled in school, if they're in Parma, we drive them to Parma every day and pick them up after school. Um, they are all seen by a pediatrician. They get books, clothes, toys. They take everything home with them when they leave. Lots of hugs and kisses and love and tender care. We're 24-7, 365 days a year. We run five shifts of child care staff. We are licensed by the Department of Job and Family Service. We are now one of the oldest operating nurseries in the United States and Canada. You're probably wondering why you don't see any children in this house. Um, we have 26 beds. For the past three years, due to declining donations, we actually are operating only 16 of our 26 beds. So all of our children are living in one house across the street, and as revenues increase, service levels can be brought back online. Um, we're also confronted with a policy change from the state of Ohio, which could even force our census lower if we don't renovate and expand our facilities. So where we serve almost 200 children a year now, would be down to about a hundred maximum. So we have a 1.8 mil project that we're working to add a wing here. We've already collected 600,000 of that from private individuals and foundations and we're gonna make it happen. Every family is unique and has their own story and situation and we're here to help them and help their children. All of the services that I described for the children and the families, all the counseling and support and service linkage and education are delivered as a part of that sponsorship. So it's not just food and meals and shelter, it's all that care and support for the whole family. And we could not be doing what we're doing without your support, really. So we're ever grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.